What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. It is July 20th, 2020. Jonathan here as Luke has the week off. He's on vacation here in Florida. A few nights ago, my wife, my daughter, and myself were able to drive over to Ocala, had dinner with Luke and his wife, Lauren. They were nice enough to treat us to dinner. Very appreciative of that. Uh, but you guys who have been listening to the show for a little bit uh, might know that Luke and I really never met in person before the other night. So it was really fun to be able to, to do that. So just riding solo here. However, uh, we were lucky enough to be joined by Magic Guard BJ Johnson earlier in the week. He was very generous with his time to sit down and talk with us. We talked a little bit about his background and, and you know his experience in the G League. But we also got to talk some NBA Orlando Magic bubble talk with BJ as well. So that interview will be coming up in just a few moments here we do have a few pieces of Orlando Magic news we would be kind of remiss if we didn't go over that kind of stuff so uh, Jonathan Isaac as a lot of people know has kind of for the most part what seems like has been ruled out to rejoin the the team this season uh, as far as on the court he is in Orlando in the bubble but Jeff Weltman has said you know it's pretty unlikely that he's going to play However, uh, Jonathan Isaac this week did take part in some limited five-on-five -five play. So a little bit of room for some optimism there. People are getting very excited about the prospect of Jonathan Isaac returning to the court this season. I still don't know if it'll happen. I really, really hope it does. But it's just going to be one of those things that they're going to have to see how his body uh, responds you know, to, to that activity on the court. Uh, further news, Markel Fultz did join the Orlando Magic in the bubble at Disney. He went through his entire quarantine. He has returned to practice with the team. He hasn't seen any five-on-five -five play quite yet, uh, but just like the team, they went through a few practices really uh, before they got into that five-on-five. -five. So they're kind of easing Markel um, back into the, the swing of things. So really excited to have Markel. Uh, James Ennis, he has rejoined the team as well. He was uh, he was confirmed to be the Orlando Magic player that had coronavirus, so uh, we're, we're glad that, that James is recovering and, and getting back in the swing of things. Holy crap, it's been so long since I've done this by myself now. I just forgot how to do it by myself. I've been with Luke. You know, we've been, we've been doing this for the, the past four months or so. Uh, we're getting ready to, to gear up to talk some Orlando Magic basketball, but man, it's been a while since I've done this by myself. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, I mean, it's really just the Orlando Magic getting back into the swing of things, uh, getting ready for a few scrimmages. Their first scrimmage is coming up this Wednesday. I believe they take on the Clippers at 3 o'clock, so be on the lookout for that. All the scrimmages will be broadcasted by the Fox Sports Florida team. We're talking Dante Marcatelli, David Steele, Jeff Turner, all of our favorites. It's going to be really great to see those guys once again. Uh, a little a little bit, well, really a lot of bit of, of sad news uh, due to the ever-evolving situation with COVID-19. Uh, the Orlando Magic uh, had to basically furlough or, or let go. I'm not, I'm not really quite sure what the exact term is. Uh, laid off, I believe it is. They had to lay off 31 full-time employees on Friday, which is about 10% of the franchise's full-time staff. Those included a longtime OrlandoMagic.com writer, John Denton. So just very appreciative of, of, of John and, and all the work that he's done over the years and all of the writing that he has done. Um, I, I really can't remember a time where I was reading Orlando Magic pieces and not reading John Denton. So I'm um, just really saddened by that. Uh, it's, it's really an unfortunate thing. It just goes to show you how unfair this virus is. But I hope when the Magic do decide to reactivate that position that they bring John Denton back. It really only seems right to me. So, uh, But other than that, guys, not much news going on. Uh, this really should be the last week, the last podcast that we've had since you know, the NBA went on hiatus that we don't have actual basketball to talk about. So if you guys have been listening from the middle of March until now, the middle of June, appreciate you guys for sticking with us. Appreciate you rocking with us. Uh, we're going to get back to talk about basketball, guys. I, I really can't wait for that. So without further ado, not much more Orlando Magic news. Uh, we're going to get into the interview with BJ Johnson. Hope you guys enjoy it. Welcome back to the Six Man Show. I am Luke Sylvia. I'm joined by my co-host, as always, Jonathan Osborne. Jonathan, how's it going? I'm in the bubble, as you can see. You know, you guys are watching on video. You see him. He's he's there. He's got two beds behind him. He's he's in the bubble. Hopefully, not going past any Disney property lines. 
and you yeah. know having yeah. to quarantine. So, no and also with us today, we've got a uh, special guest, Magic Guard BJ Johnson. BJ, how's it going, man? I oh, mean, everything's good, man. Just trying to you know adjust to living in a bubble. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's crazy, and. I mean, I don't know, BJ, how much you're keeping up with social media and, you know, what Shams is reporting, but um, I, I alluded to this, you know, we got guys that are, you know, ordering something and going past property lines, um, and we got people already using the hotline to tell on people, so it's, it's been pretty crazy. I'm just glad, you know, nothing's happened with you yet, BJ, about anybody calling in tips or anything like that. No, nah, I'm being extra, extra precautious, man. <laughs> you, you got to. But uh, BJ, first, just wanted to kind of dive into um, kind of just you as a player and, and your journey. Um, some people may know, they may not know. You started out at Syracuse and went to LaSalle. Um, and at, at LaSalle is where you really definitely found your rhythm there. Um, and, you know, you were averaging, I think, 20 a game your senior, your senior season. So um, and then come into the G League, um, you know, with Lakeland. Um, kind of, I, I guess I wanted to first talk about what is, what are the biggest differences for you in, in acclimating and kind of going between G League and NBA lifestyles? Is, is that a pretty big adjustment? Um, before, no, going from Lakeland to Orlando is, it makes it easier just for the simple fact that, you know, the coaching staff there tries to, you know, mimic stuff they do in Orlando. So, like even going into training camp this year, I kind of had a sense of, you know, the playing style, the, the schemes and all right. that. So, um, again, like for a lot of people, they got to try to, you know, take what they did in the G League and then get to a, you know, a different team in a, on the NBA level and there's a whole different scheme. So, you know, some people challenge that, uh, have challenges with that, but, you know, from, from going from Lakeland to Orlando it was kind of similar, but, um, when you get to Orlando, it's more of a, it's not more, it's not more so of your skills, more so mental things like make sure you're in the right, you know, defensive place at all time, make sure you're, you know, talking out coverages and all that thing. So, I mean, the biggest thing from, for me going from Lakeland to Orlando was, you know, just being there mentally every day and trying to be locked in as locked in as I can. Yeah. And also, you know, some people also might know, um, last year, uh, you went and signed a 10 day with Atlanta and in Atlanta, you got to play with a guy that just recently retired that everybody knows and loves. I know that you, I've, I've heard you say that you, uh, grew up watching him as well as a lot of us did, but what was it like playing in alongside Vince Carter? You even received an assist. Uh, you gave him an assist in your first game, passed it to you in the corner and you hit that three. What was that like playing with Vince after hearing about him all those years? Uh, I mean, it's like a surreal thing. Um, no, not too many people would last in the league as long as he did. And then, you know, for me just to get the opportunity to, you know, share a moment with him, um, it's pretty mm -hmm. dope. Um, no, after my yeah. first, uh, my first basket, he was like one of the first guys off the bench, like, mm -hmm. like, here you are. Like, so, um, he was definitely one of the guys who, like, if you need anything, you need help with like sets or whatever, just, you know, just come to me and I'll try to help you. So have him around for that was pretty dope. Yeah, it seemed like, like you said, not many guys can keep their, their game going that long, as long as VC did. And it was a big part, obviously, with, with him, you know, going from being the guy to then being the veteran on the team who would, you know, tell people like you, like, let me know if you need help with schemes, stuff like that. So that speaks to, to Vince as a player. I think that's awesome that you got to uh, play alongside him for the games that you did. Um, and then what was it like uh, playing, uh, you know, for the, for the Kings? Because you did that after, after Atlanta, correct? And they signed you the remainder of the season as well? Yeah. So, I mean, for that, it was similar to, like, another 10 days. It was probably, like, 10 days left in the season. So, mm -hmm. um, technically, I guess that was, like, the third 10-day. Um, right. You know, they were trying to – I mean, at that point, like, I don't think we had a chance to make the playoffs. So, it was kind of mm – -hmm. Let, let's see what happened, but um, no, they threw me out there for a little bit. My, I think the last game of the season, I scored, and you know, I went to summer league with them, and then after that, we just parted ways. Right. So, BJ, just to backtrack a little bit, you know, your first couple of years in college, you know, playing for Syracuse, not playing maybe you know as much as you would have liked to. You transfer to LaSalle, I believe you sat out your junior year 
Uh, and mm-hmm. then the, your senior year, you know, just an incredible season uh, where your numbers just skyrocket, right? And then going from LaSalle, you know, into the G League playing, you know, the Lakeland Magic, just another step up, right? And you just kind of continue to, to put up numbers and continue to dominate, especially seeing the development in your shooting numbers. You know, you're a really good shooter at LaSalle, but, you know, you're shooting over 42% both, you know, your first two years uh, in the G League. Can you just walk us through a little bit as, as far as uh, the reasoning behind that, you know, the development of your, of your jump shot and just your, your ability to score the rock? Um, I mean, my dad was like a big time scorer, so I think it's just he, in the blood. I mean, it's just in the in the genes, man. So, I mean, he was always you know around me trying to like tune my game up to you know, be able to put the ball in the basket. But um, at LaSalle, I was more of like a a mid range guy. So, you know, now it's like analytics say like the mid range isn't really right. you know, the, the greatest shot. So. Um, oh, that's Demar. Going, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a couple a couple of people who you know get away with it, but right for the most part, you know, like a lot of teams don't like the mid range shot. So, um, you know, after college, you know, I just put in a lot of work, extra reps at threes, and then um, I went to Portsmouth and I shot I think like forty five percent or something at Portsmouth from Jeez. three, and I mean, I just <laughs> been shooting 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 the lights out ever since, plus right? Ever since. So. You mentioned your, your dad a moment ago, so I did want to backtrack even a little bit further. Uh, being from Philadelphia, I believe, uh, and you have the nickname Bean. So a lot of people know Bean, Philadelphia, that connection. Uh, is that stem from Kobe Bryant, or where does that, where does that nickname come from? Um, my aunt gave me that nickname when I was, like, young, uh, and it just kind of stuck with me. Uh, coincidentally, I went to Lower Marion, too, so, um, hmm. I mean, that just happened to be a coincident thing, but. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's crazy that you, you know, for those who don't know, he, like you said, he went to Lower Marion, which um, if you also don't know, that's where Kobe went. So um, pretty crazy. What was that like playing at Lower Marion? Was there a lot of, you know, always talk about Kobe or or what was it like playing there? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a lot. Um, so my high school coach was actually Kobe's coach. So every that's everything we did bad it was like kobe didn't do that like kobe did this. <laughs> you're like coach i'm sorry but i'm not kobe <laughs> you know what i mean especially I mean, when you're in high um, school when we got when i my first year there you no know, we got a brand new school and he uh he donated to the gym so the i mean the gym is named after him his face is all over the gym and so i mean you know his legacy is definitely there did you ever get to meet kobe um, I met him briefly, you know, on, for the gym ceremony, gym, uh, the gym, like, dedication ceremony, and then, yeah. um, I was supposed to work out with him this summer, actually, but, you know, unfortunately, you no, know, right. you can't do that, but. Yeah, it's tragic. Yeah. Well, I, not to, to get too somber here, obviously, it's terrible, you know, what happened to Kobe, and we, we all miss him, definitely. Um, I did want to ask you kind of a, a Lakers uh, related question. So one of your, you know, appearances with the Orlando Magic this year uh, was that win in Los Angeles, you know, the Magic against the Lakers, where you, Gary Clark, guys were, you know, coming in pretty recently to the Magic, really mm-hmm. helped give the Magic a boost in that first half. I think you guys went up as far as like 20, 25 points. LA made it close at the end uh, before you guys kind of closed that out. But can you just kind of speak to that? Like, just coming into a situation, staying ready, having the ability to play well, just kind of where does that come from? Uh, so another funny story with uh, Gary, actually, that was my uh, Portsmouth roommate. So hmm. um, for us, it was kind of like just grinding, like like nobody gave us anything. So for us, it was right. just a grind. And then, you no, know, he went to Houston for a little bit, I sent there, and then you know, ended in Orlando. But, you no, know, for us, we just – like those guys that you know come to come to work every day, get our work in, try to get better, try to get better, you know, because we just never know when that opportunity to come. And then, you no, know, we had a couple of injury, injuries in LA, and you no, know, our number was called, and we did what we could. All right. And and let's shift gears a little bit here. Obviously, as we talked about earlier, uh, you are in the bubble. Um, what what has that been like? I know you guys are are driving golf carts everywhere. You're, you're fishing all the time. I see a lot of guys playing ping pong or table tennis. Uh, I think Donovan Mitchell was streaming that last night on Instagram Live of them playing ping pong. So what's it been like? Like, 
what is the you've been on the road with the team before how much different is it do you have to like condition yourself like i'm gonna be here for a few months what has it been like compared to being on the road uh i mean one of the you know, biggest things is we're away for you know two months or you know whatever mm-hmm. it may be and uh just being away from your family for that long i mean road trips are usually a week at a time maybe so mm-hmm. uh no we definitely got adjust to that but um I mean, the NBA does a good job of trying to give us things to do, like fishing. Um, you know, we got a, every team has a boat, so I mean, if we want to go and take a take a boat out, we could you no know, ride on a lake and Can't stuff be mad like at that. that. Um, there's a team like a a players' lounge where you know we got the ping pong, pool tables, um, mm-hmm. cards. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in there, so I mean, there are definitely you no know, things to do, but. You no, know, granted, you know, our schedule sometimes it's hard to get out to do it, but you know, when you get right. the time to do it, a lot of people try to get out and you know, do those things. Yeah, we're and recording this on uh, sorry to cut you off, uh, Luke. We're recording this uh, July 14th, and you guys have had, I think, before today, like five straight days of practice. So, yeah, um, getting a day off and being able to do some of those things. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and- a lot of people um, going out to golf uh, a little bit. So, I mean, a bunch of people are taking up like the opportunity to try to you know find something to do when you know the time presents itself. So. Right. Yeah, and and BJ, you talked about being away from family. Um, you and I haven't really gotten to talk much since this happened, but I just want to say congrats on uh, on your baby girl, Indy Jade. Um, that's awesome. And and is that that? Is, do you think that'll make things just a little bit harder to stay away for that long? But um, you know, obviously, it's what you guys do to support her. I definitely. I mean. It's definitely a sacrifice just because, you know, at that age, you know, everything happens so fast. So I'm like missing like little, little things. But yeah, uh, I mean, it's a good reason behind me being here. So right. Try to make it work. Absolutely. And, and when people hear this episode, I believe it'll be on technically you guys' first game day for those exhibition games. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what has that been like? What's, you know, coach been telling you guys, um, you guys have been kind of working on your game as best you can, but you're finally getting into five on five here at Disney bubble. So what do you expect, you know, that first, those exhibition games to be like, that'll be your first taste of those empty stand, empty stands, no fans, yeah. um, no momentum to feed off of besides each other. So it, it kind of, how important do you think it'll be to be vocal and, and, you know, hype each other up when it comes to those games? Um, I mean, we definitely gonna have to find our own motivation. Um, technically, is not this isn't a home event for us, even though we are in Orlando. But right. Um. Now I think we've been pushing ourselves in practice. We've been playing a little bit of five on five, and you know, guys are finding their rhythm and you know, getting back into basketball shape. So, uh, you know, those scrimmages will definitely be a test to you know get us ready for our first game, which would be the Brooklyn game. I wanted to ask you, uh. BJ, you know, a lot of a lot has been made of some of the, the physical transformations that we've seen in some of the Orlando Magic players, especially on social media. Uh, what what's what's going on with Mo? Some people are saying he's put on 20 pounds. Some people are saying that he hasn't. What's your take on it? No, nah, Mo definitely came back uh, you know, bigger. Um, I think he, you know, developed a plan with, you know, the strength, the strength and conditioning guy, nutrition, uh, nutritionist and all that. And no, he took it serious and he stayed on top of it and he looks great right now. Well, that leads me to my next question. So kind of during this quarantine, how, how were you handling that whole situation? How are you trying to stay ready and stay in shape? Um, so I like know people who like have their own gym, like private gyms and stuff like that. So um, for me, it was, it wasn't that hard just because, you know, if I, once I got to the point where like I couldn't stay in the house anymore, I had the option to, you know, go work out and, you know, get my work in. And I think, um, I think I surprised myself actually when I got back by how much in shape I was, you know, awesome. based on our like conditioning tests and stuff like that. So. Awesome. Luke, did you have any, anything else here? Uh, I think while we're here, we got a few minutes left uh, before, you know, Jonathan's got something going on. BJ is going fishing. Um, but Wanted to get your take, BJ, on the food and the Disney bubble. Has it is it really as bad as people are saying? Some people are saying, "Nah, it's fine." But what's your take on that? Um, 
Yes and no. Um, the first, <laughs> now the first, you know, when you get here, you got to quarantine. So um, we're just stuck in our room for two days. And, you know, our, you know, our chef is, can't really have a say on what we eat. So, you no, know, everything mm-hmm. is just, I think everybody got the same food for them first two quarantine days. And it wasn't like stuff that we're used to or stuff that we're accustomed to. But, um, you know, after quarantine is over, you know, we got meals based on whatever our team, individual teams, you know, tell the chefs, the Disney chefs to make. So um, the food definitely got better. Mm -hmm. Uh, The greatest food, but it's better than, (laughs) it's better than what it was those first two days, definitely. And then um, I think each resort has like two or three restaurants that are open. So if you want, you could go get food there and then, um, it's like six or seven partner restaurants you go order from. So, um, it's definitely getting better. Awesome. BJ, last question that, that I had here that we wanted to ask. So you guys, it's kind of a unique situation, right? You're in this bubble. It's like a, an extended road trip, but, um, in your free time, at least you guys really don't have much else to do really, but spend time together. Right. And I can only think, and, and obviously as an Orlando magic fan, hope, that that's going to help boost the, the team chemistry and possibly take that to another level. Um, I, I think chemistry is one of the things that has been kind of not talked about enough going into this bubble, just being as how you guys are just together almost 24 um, seven. How do you see that affecting the magic specifically? Um, I think even like po- uh, pre bubble, I mean, we all you know everybody in the locker room gets along with each other. So right. You know, just coming out here and then, you know, having to spend extra time, you know, going golfing, going fishing, um, you know, playing games, whatever it may be. I definitely think that, you know, gives us a little advantage. That's awesome, man. Well, I don't know if you knew this or not, um, but you mentioned a couple minutes ago the injuries in January to, like, DJ Augustine, Michael Carter-Williams. They brought in you and, and Gary Clark, um, especially for that, that Lakers game. Uh, but for a while, you know, Magic fans have been seeing how well you've been playing in Lakeland have been saying, you know, we, we need some guard help. We need to give B.J. Johnson a look. How does that make you feel? Um, I mean, I try not to pay too much attention to, like, with, like, people saying social media. but It's probably um, a good idea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> I look, I, like, I look, but, like, it right. really, like I'm not one of the guys. Try not to let it affect you, right. Yeah, I don't get caught too much, like, caught up in it. I'll just – see what people are saying but um I think it's just like a testament to like how I carry myself and how you know I you know I just keep working regardless of you know the situation I'm in definitely man well we appreciate the time man keep working uh do your best to to keep your sanity in that bubble um I know I speak for Luke when we say we're really excited to see you and the and the rest of the team back on the court on um, those scrimmages I, I think they're coming up in in eight days on the 22nd so we'll be looking forward to that man just um, we also really appreciate what you're doing. It's not an easy thing that you guys are doing, you know, being away from your family, you being away from your, your newborn baby girl there. So, uh, but just thank you for the time and, and thank you for what you're doing, man. We really, really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate Appreciate, appreciate right, you for having me. Definitely, man. All right. That was our interview with Magic Guard. BJ Johnson was a ton of fun. Hope you guys really enjoyed that one. Once again, big thank you to BJ for being so generous with your time and coming on. Uh, If you watched the video version of this podcast, you'll see that I was in the bubble as well as BJ. So once again, thank you guys so much for listening to the Six Man Show. Next week, we will be back. Good grief, I can't speak. We will be back. Uh, Luke will be back as well next week. We'll break down uh, the Orlando Magic scrimmages, and we will go from there. Once again, thank you guys for listening to the Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. Peace.